Hi and welcome back. In our previous video in this series, we created our own ARM stub so that the Raspberry Pi would boot into exception level 3. In this video, we're going to go through the process of booting up our kernel in exception level 1. So let's get started. First, if you haven't already done so, you're going to want to download the ARCH64 reference manual. You can go to Google and just type that in here and the very first link is going to show you where to actually download it. You go here, there's a download button, you select the document. I'm using version f.c, but they're, they're all relatively the same. Some minor updates. So I'm going to go ahead and open mine that I already downloaded here. There we go. So now let's go on to the boot code here. If we move into our boot.s file, <clears throat> under the master label, we're, this is where we're going to start the process of moving to EL1. We're going to use LDR x0. We're going to give it the value of SCTRL value MMU disabled. Then we're going to use the MSR instruction to put that value into the SCTLR EL1 um, special register. So where do we get that value from? Well, we're going to have to actually create a sysregs.h file here. So let's start with pragma once. So I'm going to just paste these values in here. They came right from a uh, Sergey's tutorial, which also comes from the Linux kernel here. Um, so here you go, this MMU disabled value. It's made up of an OR of these values above it. The first is a set of reserved bits that are set, which I don't know fully the details on those, but all these bits are uh, just set to zero. But the important one here is this MMU enabled, which you'll see is bit zero. So bit zero being set here. So if we go here to section D13.2.113 in the manual, that's where the details of this register are. And the very first bit there, which we saw in that uh, define here, let's see if we scroll down to bit zero, it'll provide a better explanation. Here we go, M bit zero. And that's the MMU enable bit. So if we're setting it to zero, that would mean it's disabled. If you set it to one, it would be enabled, according to the documentation here. So let's go to here. You see we have the MMU disabled is zero. MMU enabled is, is one. So we're using the disabled value in our, in our uh, macro here. So that's where this value comes from. And we need to include our header file here as well to use that. So for the next part, we're going to use the LDR command again, and we're going to load this value, HCR value. <clears throat> and MSR, we're using for HCR EL2. Now this is another register here. We'll look that up in, to, in the uh, manual. That's section D13.2.47. So if we go to there, there we go. Here's here's the register's definition. So here we see the 64-bit register. If we scroll down, what we need, want to look at first, yeah, let's go to the uh, regs file and paste this data in here. So it looks like Bit 31 is the important one here. That's the RW field, the RW bit. So let's scroll down to that. And here we go, the RW bit. So this states that the execution state control, so if, you, if it's set to zero, it's going to put all levels in ARCH32, but we want ARCH64. So that's why we set this value to 1. And so let's go here back to the boot code. So the next register, we're going to load this value, scr underscore value. 
and we're going to use MSR to load that into the SCR EL3 variant, uh, register. So let's look that one up as well in the reference manual. Oh, first we're, we'll go ahead and add it to the sysregs here. And yeah, I put the comment here for the uh, where to find that in the manual. Actually, let me go ahead and add that comment to each of these registers so you have it. <clears throat> so in this one, there's a set of reserved bits. We'll go to the manual here. D13.2.112. This is the SCR EL3 register. We have these bits four and five are reserved bits that we need to set. And then we have this NS bit at zero. And then, yeah, RW, there's, there's the value that we need to use here. Let's scroll down here to bit 10. That's the RW bit. And it's the same as the previous register where we have zero for ARCH32 and one for ARCH64. And of course we wanna jump into 64 bit mode from this register. And then we have the NS bit here, which shows whether the uh, EL0 and EL1 will be in a secure state. So we have the RW register that we're setting and the NS register that we are also setting. So it's the zero bit with the value one. So let's go back over here to the reference manual. So in here, see right here, we have the value one. So that sh indicates that exception levels lower than EL3 are gonna be in a non-secure state. So memory access from those exception levels cannot access secure memory. So those are the defines here. And we see we're setting the reserved values there in the RW and the NS flag for SCR value. So let's go back here to the boot. And our next register we need to set up, LDR X0. We're gonna do the SPSR value. We're gonna use MSR to the SPSR EL3 register. Let's look that one up here. Actually, let's go ahead and add it to the sysreg first. So that one's in C5.2.19. Take a jump over to that section here in the manual. So SPSR EL3. Now in this one, there's a few flags that we need to set, and then we need to set the mode. So bits 8, 7, and 6. And then we need to set the mode, which is from bits 0 to 3. So we'll see 8, 7, and 6 here are the interrupt mask, the SAR interrupt mask, IRQ mask, and the fast IRQ mask. So now we're going to jump down here to M. So bits 0 to 3, this is the uh, exception level we want to move to. And we want to move to EL1H, and you'll see that's the binary value 5, which is why, so we see our mask that we're setting the value 7 starting at bit 6, so that'll be 6, 7, 8. And then EL1 is the value that we want to set, which you see 5 as the value. There's also a value for EL2, but we're not using that. We're just using the mask all and the EL1H flag. So let's go back here to the boot code. All right, so after here, we have one more register here. We're going to run ADR to get the address of the EL1 entry. And what is the EL1 entry? It's this label we're adding right here. So we want to essentially jump to this label. So we're gonna use M MSR to ELR EL3 
the value, the address that we put into x0. So what essentially this means is when we're finished executing this IRQ, we're going to jump to this EL1 entry section in that EL1 exception level. So let's go ahead and make clean and make this code Raspberry Pi 3. We've got an error here. Okay, this reserved flag. I need to yeah, I, I changed this. Let me jump back over to the sysregs header file. Just put that back to one line here. Make, and we got some variable wrong here. M-S-C-T-R-L. Okay, yeah, that's the wrong spelling here. So this should be M-S-C-T-L-R. So there we go. And here we go, it compiled properly. So if we go here and reboot the Raspberry Pi with our updated SD card, let's start it up here. Here we see exception level three. And why did it do that? It should be exception level one. So let's jump back here Let's go back to our boot code and let's see, we have going through the master, um, okay, I think I see a problem here. Once we need to actually return from the exception by using the eret um, instruction here. And that's going to reset the program counter, return from this current exception level and into EL1. So you can see I've already run it here when I was debugging here, but I'm going to run it again here and See, so start up, and then we see exception level one. So now this we're in the proper exception level to start our kernel. So I think that's a good stopping point for this video. Now that our kernel is running in EL1, we can move on to the initialization of other features and functionality. I think in the next video we'll start with the interrupt vectors. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe and comment if you have any questions or thoughts on this process. And thanks for watching.